Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and this is 5 Tips to be More Efficient in Amos, the Structural Equation Modeling Software Program. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about how to get a little bit more efficient in kind of taking your conceptualization uh, and getting it more in kind of a final kind of testable form in Amos. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Tip 1, how to display variable names instead of labels. One of the frustrating things um, when I first started using Amos was that the default in Amos is to display variable uh, labels when you drag and drop into kind of the Amos working area. Uh, and you can see this can be somewhat kind of problematic in just trying to kind of figure out how to save space because if with very large models, you know, you really need to save as much space as you possibly can. So looking at kind of the Amos graphics window here, I've got a, a simple kind of unobservable uh, with uh, three observable little indicators and error terms right there. And so if we click on the variables uh, in the data set, you can see I've got three variables in here. So I was asking about satisfaction. Uh, and so you can see the names over here is satisfaction one, two, three. But they have the labels here, which was the actual question. So this came from kind of an online survey. They gave me a data download. Uh, and the actual question that was asked was the label, and then what I, you know, had made it, but if it's abbreviation was, was the name. And you can see if I just drag this in here and drop it into kind of my observable, well, it's kind of problematic in the standpoint of, yeah, I've got the whole question, but I don't need the whole question, and now it's kind of lapping over all my other indicators, uh, and if I drag all of these in here, uh, satisfaction one, two, and three, well, then it's just kind of a hot mess a little bit. So even if I move it around, you know, to kind of give me some, kind of see what's going on, it's still really kind of problematic. And so I really just want to display the variable name, not the label, when I'm trying to work with my, my model. You know, and before I'd kind of figured out kind of how to do this in Amos, what I was doing was basically just going into SPSS or SAS and then, uh, basically kind of wiping out all of the labels and then copying all the names and then posting pasting them in there and then kind of saving it and going back into to Amos well again I didn't have any idea in Amos what the actual question wording was while doing that and so it was kind of problematic but Amos has a function to kind of address this uh, and where we need to go is to go up into the view uh, menu and then go to the interface properties uh, and so if you go into interface properties, you'll see a bunch of tabs uh, out here at the top, but we really want to stick to the one that says miscellaneous here, uh, the MISC. And there's a bunch of check boxes down at the bottom here. Now, if we uncheck the one that says display variable labels, then you can see now we have got just the names that come in when we drag and drop. And so now I have something that's much more easy to use uh, than... Uh, trying to go back and copy and paste the names in because I can still see in my variable list what the label is. And so if I've got a problem maybe with one that's not loading very well, I can see, well, that question wording wasn't very good uh, without having to go back into a previous version of the SPSS. Um, and so it just kind of, you know, helps you to be able to see things a little bit quicker. Tip two. Tip two is to change the paper size. Um, the default in Amos is that your paper or your kind of working area, if you will, is going to be defaulted to kind of a portrait kind of uh, format. Most uh, models that you're going to create are more kind of left to right, not up to down. And so really you need more space in more kind of a landscape mode than kind of a portrait mode because everything's really cramped, you know, going left to right and kind of portrait. Well, the way to do that, again, is we're going to go back up to this kind of view menu up here and going to go back to the interface properties, except this time we're going to go to uh, page layout. Uh, and you can see if you can put the margins here, uh, but it also says paper size. And so the default on that is portrait letter. So if we change that and we go down to, let's say, landscape letter, you can see now that I've got much more space to kind of work kind of left to right and maybe even up to, you know, up to down uh, and even kind of diagonally than I do kind of in a portrait, um, land, uh, portrait kind of format. And so it just kind of helps you give it a little bit more space, especially with large models. Tip three. 
Tip three is save the center of the page for structural paths. So if we go back to Amos, you can see that I've been, uh, got presented here a full structural model. Full structural meaning that there are measurement properties included with each construct, but there's also structural paths or relationships between constructs here. And the default when you're actually uh, kind of creating unobservables uh, with observable is that the oftentimes you'll see the observables that are either listed below it or above it. That's kind of how the default how Amos uh, kind of creates those. And you can see I've just got a simple model here with uh, five constructs where I've got uh, adaptive and this uh, behavior and this other construct called service scape kind of leading to kind of customer delight. Uh, and delights leading to tolerance to kind of future failures and kind of you know positive word of mouth. And so I'm, I'm, I'm looking to kind of understand these relationships, but the way that the model is kind of drawn right now, it's really kind of complicated in the standpoint of it's hard to see the structural paths. Because um, you can see like adaptive behavior is having to kind of cut through kind of its measurement properties to get there. Service scapes kind of doing the same thing. If you can kind of see these arrows having to kind of cut through to get to the other observable. And then even these outcome, again, are having to kind of cut through uh, other observables to actually get to the unobservable uh, construct that actually needs to show the relationship to. And this is just five constructs. Typically you'll see with larger models anywhere, seven, eight, ten plus constructs, what's going to be really difficult to kind of see the relationships. Really where you want to kind of focus in on is, you know, kind of seeing, well, what have I got modeled going to what construct? And it gets more, much more difficult if you don't really kind of save the center of the page for more kind of structural relationships. Now what I mean by that is, is you really need to move more of your kind of measurement properties or observables and its error terms to kind of the edge of the page and then kind of save the center, if you will, for more kind of the structural relationships because it's just going to make it easier for you to see. So to do this, we need to go up to this uh, icon here in Amos called Rotate Indicators of Latent Variable. It looks like a circle with an arrow on it. Uh, and what this does is it's going to rotate our, our indicators around. Um, and so you, we may have to kind of uh, move them as well to kind of pull them off the screen and kind of get them into more kind of a, um, a manageable form here. But see, I'm going to rotate these, um, these error terms right to the kind of the edge of the page. I want to save kind of the middle for the structural relationships. So we can do this for the other ones too. Um, just kind of pull those over. I'm going to kind of tighten up everything, kind of move it to the edge. Um, the, the customer delight's going to have to kind of stay where it's at because it's in the center, you know. So from that standpoint, we're just going to leave it as is. But the other ones over here for tolerance for, uh, for failure, we're going to move that over and kind of, again, kind of get the um, observe uh, observables to a point where we can get them really kind of close to the edge of the page where it's you know nice uh, and for the middle part to be in nicely and easily uh, for us to recognize what's going on and we're going to do this last one too so again I'm just kind of moving these over and kind of shaping them up a little bit so I can uh, easily see um, all of the observables but also the structural relationships too so now you can kind of see now with all of the observables kind of at the edge of the page, well, it makes it much easier now to ultimately kind of see what the structural relationships are. And so now at this standpoint, I can easily see, okay, well, I've got two going to customer delight and delight's going to two. And if I had a very large model, I could still probably see it, you know, pretty easily on the structural paths. Because now the, the center of the, the page is really saved for more of the, uh, those structural relationships and the outside of it is more measurement related. And I'm not having to cut through my paths, my arrows through my observables. And it just gets kind of confusing, especially if there's a lot of covariance or there's a lot of measurement items within an observable construct. And ultimately, it's just going to make it more efficient for you to kind of see what you've already added paths to and what do you need to add paths to as well. Tip four. Uh, tip four is uh, have Amos label all of your error terms. All error terms in Amos have to be uniquely labeled. Um, so let's go back to our example in Amos. Uh, you can see that I've got that full structural model back up again, but now there's no 
um, error terms that are actually labeled. And this is typically how it will look when you're developing the model initially. You'll come up with, well, how, you know, draw your model in, and then initially you're going to label your unobservables or your big kind of construct names. And then after that, you're going to have to label all error terms. Now, the hard way to do this is if you actually went into the model and just, you know, like double click into an error term and we just called it E1. Uh, so typically you're going to reserve E and a number uh, to denote error. Uh, Amos kind of defaults to that. So it's a habit you really need to kind of get into of don't label any of your like your variable names of observables uh, as an E and a number. Uh, I don't do that as for your unobservables. And for the most part, kind of keep E and a number is denoted for error. Now the problem is, is I would have to go into each one of these error terms, double click in E2, E3, E4, E5. Well, you, you know, you could see if you had a very large model, that could be upwards of, you know, 40 or 50 error terms you're having to uniquely label. Well, that takes a lot of time. You know, and so Amos has a function that kind of can go in there and just kind of label everything for you error-wise, um, which kind of takes some of this kind of just grunt work out of it, if you will. So to do this, you're going to go up to the plugins menu at the top, uh, and then you're going to come down to where it says name unobservable variables and click that. And if you do that, you can see now that all of the error terms are labeled with an E and a number. Uh, and you, you might be asking, well, how do, what's the, the numbering format here? It's usually when the uh, error term was created, like which one was created first, gets the lower number. The one that gets created kind of last in the order of sequence gets kind of a higher number. Uh, so w whatever error term you kind of create first, usually that's probably going to be E1. So it labels not only your observable error terms, but it also labeled too, if you can kind of see over here, uh, your uh, error terms that are coming off of your unobservable construct when they're dependent variables. Now the problem though is too, is if you do not label your unobservable uh, ahead of time, you know, for instance, if we have word mouth and I just kind of get rid of it and I go back up there and I hit that plugins and I name unobservable variables again, it will default with F and a number. Uh, so it will label all of those, even your unobservable uh, construct names, but it will put it as an F and then it will just sequentially kind of number all of those. Now I do not recommend doing that because it's almost impossible when you get into the analysis to go back and be like, well, okay, F1 has a relationship with F4, what is, what is that? Well, you don't want to kind of guess around have to go flip back and forth so always just make sure to label your kind of unobservable very unobservable constructs uh, and then use the um, the label unobservable constructs function that is through Amos for just your error terms because to be honest with you you're not going to be uh, needing as much kind of you know detail work of figuring out what is what does this one mean you know exactly um, with the error terms so you can label the have Amos label all of them instead of you doing that one by one now you've clicked you know one button it's all done you're ready to move on you know bing bang boom done tip five tip five is how to resize all observable variables at the same time so let's go back to Amos and I've got kind of a abbreviated version of uh, the model we were just looking at, which is just adaptive behavior, going to customer delight, uh, which is going to word of mouth. So initially when you may kind of drag and drop your items in your observables into your model, you may find that your variable names are actually a little bit longer than the uh, box that was initially kind of uh, set up for it. You can see an example down here like the adapt uh, adaptive behavior, all these adapt one, two, three, four, five really isn't contained within the box. You can see all the same thing for delight one, two, three, and even word of mouth over here too. Now I could go into uh, each one of these and I could resize them out, you know, but that seems like, again, a kind of a labor intensive process to go through each one of those to get kind of the label, you know, basically to. Uh, 
I mean, not the label, but the, the, the name to get in, in included inside the box. And Amos has a, a function that will kind of take care of this for us, too. So if we go up to the plugins uh, at the top and you go resize uh, observe variables, what it does is it automatically kind of puts the uh, a box or resizes a box that's going to encompass the variable name in there. So now I can clearly see the entire name within the box for all of my um, observable variables. Instead of me having to go one by one and changing all of those, now I have an option that can just basically say, well, I want to see the variable name in all of my observable boxes, make, it, make that happen. Kind of one click uh, and then it's done. So you don't have to kind of go one by one through all of them. So those are the kind of the five tips to be more efficient. Uh, if you're looking for more tips uh, on how to get efficient in Amos, or if you're just looking to kind of get, build up your knowledge about structural equation modeling, um, I'd encourage you to check out my book. Uh, it's called Applied Structural Equation Modeling Using Amos. You can find it at most uh, major booksellers. I've also got a link uh, down in the description if you want to find that. Uh, the book covers basic um, uh, topics such as confirmatory factor analysis, structural equation modeling in, in regards to structural paths, but also can even address more advanced topics such as mediation, moderation, uh, moderated mediation, categorical variables, and many more, and more kind of a step-by-step -step kind of how-to kind of explanation. Uh, so if you saw value in this uh, video, I would ask that you uh, like and subscribe um, because there's more videos coming. Uh, and I hope you all have a great day.